Hey guys, I received this journal, this leather journal, uh, for Christmas back in 2021. And compared to the journals that I make for myself or some other journals, this one felt extra special because it's got the you know, nice soft leather and it's got the really thick, like handmade paper pages and deckled edges. Yeah, maybe this camera will pick that up. And I don't know about you, but when you get that gift that seems a little extra special, you feel like I don't want to use it right away because I gotta save it for something special. Um, and I didn't want that to be the case because then it just sits, right? Just sits on a shelf, not being used. So I jumped right in that Christmas and I saved a cover page and I just did this line art illustration of my Christmas tree that year. Just to kind of get started, break it in, and lose that fear of ruining it. I just wanted to jump right in. It felt good to go ahead and once I did the first page, then I felt like I had this freedom to go ahead and keep using and keep doing my art in the book. So. That was December 27th of 21, so I went ahead the next day even and did this pencil sketch of this reindeer. And I enjoyed the way the sketch came out so much that I decided I didn't even want to add any color to it. I had like this fear that if I started adding color to it, I might ruin what I'm already happy with. And that's what it's about, right? Getting to a place of self-expression so that uh, you feel joy. It's all about joy. <laughs> all right, so it took a while. It did sit after this, because look, the next painting I did in here, February 5th of 22. So I guess what happened after I did this little Christmas theme I didn't know how I wanted to use the book. It sat, and then I decided that I was going to use it for, um, I guess I want to call it like my happy place. It's that place that I go to when I meditate or if I need to just take a deep breath. I have an entire world with different buildings and landscapes that I can go to when I need to decompress, meditate, relax. So I thought, how fun would it be to take these visions in my imagination and put them in paper? So that's what I've dedicated this book to. And so I decided to develop a story from it. You have the magic of Christmas. And if we could keep that magic in our heart year round, especially when we need to tap into it. So I had the deer was going to be pulling me into the story because I can imagine a beautiful forest in the woods the deer don't run like they do out here when they see you they spook and they run here the birds are chirping the sun is out it's sunny it's warm so here I just brought the deer into the woods and I wanted to create this painting where it draws your eye to their center and if you look cradled in the antlers of the deer you have what could that be it looks like it's possibly a cottage and there's even some smoke coming out of the chimney so it invites you in to walk up this path So now, let's get a closer look at what you might find, what the cottage looks like. So this became the next page. And it really developed as I was painting it, because in my imagination it was definitely a stone building. I think I would have liked to have more stone work here, but for the sake of what I painted, this is what developed. And I really like this idea of a crystal at the top. 
We have this place uh, near here in northeast Pennsylvania called Column Sill, uh, where it's similar to Stonehenge, if you want to put it that way, except we know who put the stones there. And they do have one of their chapels, the Bell Tower, and it has a crystal inside their Bell Tower. Kind of inspired me with this painting. All right, now that's in August. So we went from February 22 to August of 22. So it took a few months to get that out. And then it sat some more. Because I only just finished the next page, I wanted you to walk up to the door. And what are you going to find when you open the door? And that's what this video is about. It's about me grabbing that image from my imagination and working with it and putting it to paper. Okay, so we're going to jump right into clips that I captured while I was in the process of creating this page. And there's going to be some voiceovers after the fact while I was editing it. Enjoy! Alright, so this was the page before. And now that you're walking through the forest up to this cottage, I want to take you to the door and have the door be open. Maybe it opens on its own as you approach magically. So anyhow, the point of reference, we have the greenery up along the side. There's that rock there. So you got the rock, you've got the greenery. The one thing about recording myself while I'm in the process is that I can trail off. My thoughts can trail off and I don't finish a sentence. So the interesting thing that I went through as I went to create this up close detailed version of the door is that the cottage is more modern than I think I would have imagined it this mysterious cottage out in the woods mostly stonework but it does have a thatched roof as i was creating the steps in it looks too much like it's a slab entrance i think in my mind it would have had let's see options dirt floor mm -hmm. i don't know about dirt floor A wooden plank floor? No. I think it would have been stone. So if it's a stone building, but look at, I have, this is such um a clean cemented look around it this part that i'm painting right now so it's not very rush rough i think the word that i was really looking for there was rustic that part of the architecture of this building that i designed definitely not as rustic as I think I would have imagined it. So creating a design out of something that I imagine is a lot different for me than when I do say um, like urban sketching where you're actually looking at something so you don't have to try and recreate this imaginary vision that I have in my mind when you're urban sketching you're staring at something so that comes a lot easier to me not much color on this door here 
but I imagine it to be more brown like the thatch and maybe there was just light hitting it here. There's almost this aged wood. Maybe it just needs to be more weathered. I know I don't have any video of me actually sketching out the page, but I had to find a door in my house that opened inward like that, and my front door is the only one. And it was a really cold day, so I'm standing out on the porch in like below freezing weather, looking at my door and trying to decide how I wanted to capture this this kind of teaser look inside the room where you see this treasure chest. And once I have the design down, now it's really about how do I want to capture the texture? This is where the I start getting journal about. itself really lends it's itself to now, the it's dark browns years. and the greens. And I know the battery wasn't all that great when I first started, but my brain goes to what's going over here on the camera rather than what's going on over here in my painting. All right, so if that is a slab and a stone, like, to me it would be kind of like this color, but I, I don't want to. <laughs> right there, see, I trailed off. Ooh. I don't want to, I don't want to what? I think what I was getting mm -hmm. at was I don't want it to be very monochromatic. Maybe it's a little bit brown. Like, what if this was a stone? that goes in there it's got to show depth make sure I'm managing that okay it just has to get darker there and lighter out here so let me pull some of that back up just wetting my brush drying it off Letting it soak. <laughs> right. But if this is a three dimensional rock, now let's see. In here's got to be dark. This is the front facing stone, except for the shadow of this rock. This would have to be lighter. Right here. But I want it to look like it's a rough cut. It's a, a rough Again, I think I'm looking cut. for the word rustic. Stone. You know, like there'd be another stone maybe stacked underneath it. Can I have this? But that's just because of the light. Because you've got to show the depth. Right? We've got to show the depth. This, because it's disappearing back into that room, has got to be darker. And it's got to keep continuing up. There. So maybe this has to have... So I think I started to say that as an artist, I really love to be within my creativity, my craft, my artwork, and I love recording it. However, it does split my attention because then I become like this director, producer, recorder, cameraman. <laughs> and I can't just be in the moment of <clears throat> my art. But I have such a strong strong desire to share what I do and on that note too there's so many talented people there are so many talented people on YouTube that you can go to to really learn how to do a painting like this it would be more of a technical YouTube video how-to 
where my videos are really more about encouraging people to just explore their creativity, explore their talent, and it doesn't have to be with sketches and watercolors. It could be cooking, it could be anything. I'm really just encouraging people to oh, stop hiding in the shadows, play. You don't have to share your stuff on YouTube. I think I'm gonna take a break because I want I want it to dry a little bit, and then I want to figure because then I'll figure out how I want to do the burst of color coming out of there. Yeah, I'm gonna take a break. Plus, that was 24, 25 minutes worth of video. Hey, cool. So I've probably been sitting here for about 20 minutes, and I just wanted to show you as it was drying because I do this wet on wet kind of painting, like this impatient, just want to paint, leave me alone, let me be in my own world kind of painting. So let's look close up here. So where I had the edge of the door, it bled in there. I've lost the edge here, kind of. Um, let's just see it more around here. You know, it still has this kind of messy, undefined look. I'm here to tell you, don't worry about it. Because <laughs> like I said, this could be part illustration. And if one of my reasons to share is to try and inspire you to go ahead and get out there and do your thing, is not to worry about stuff like this. Because I believe that is going to add some texture and personality to the illustration later all right so this page is completely dry we've moved into the studio and because i want this to be as if when you opened the trunk it looks like there's like galaxies swirling in there um i really want to use these lindy sprays because that really is what i'm looking for that kind of starburst I also grabbed one of these it's Martha Stewart it's metallic it's sterling I don't know if I want to use that or not <clears throat> plus these are liquid you know what I mean as opposed to this being acrylic paint this is mostly water but I also don't know if I want to do it straight on here or if I want to gesso it, which really this isn't a gesso, it's just titanium white. And it's not quite this similar. <clears throat> the paper, the absorption rate is not the same on this paper. But it felt like the closest thing I had without tearing a page out to do a sample on. So I want to take this out of the way. I feel like I gave the impression there that I didn't want to do it in the book. That I wanted to do it on this paper and then glue it into the book or something. But... This really was an exercise of trying to decide how I wanted to paint in the book and doing these tests on this scrap piece of paper, which was the closest thing I could find similar to the pages that these, the journal is made out of. I also have these from Lindy's Magicals. I love these powders. But they really do work better when you can just throw them on the page, spray them with some water, and then tilt the page and get these wonderful swirl-like designs. I love how dark that is in comparison to what's going on over there. 
I thought I was going to lean more towards the powders, but I think I really like the way this is. That blue definitely has a shimmer. Yeah, shimmer was the most important yeah, thing for me. going back towards the sprays. And then the question is... Do I do it on the gesso or do no. I do it without the gesso? I think I'm going to do a combo. So I think what I'm going to do... I'm going to get the water out of the way before I spill it. And put the powders back. I think the powders are more fun if I wanted to go for a swirl. Swirl! <laughs> kind of effect. But these, this kind of a streaking light effect. So I'm going to... I do have some white in here. So we're switching from a, like, watercolors from a wash to a thick acrylic. I have such a vivid imagination, but yet I get frustrated because I have trouble translating this magical world inside my brain onto paper. I really couldn't come to terms at first how I wanted this to look. <clears throat> like I could probably find in a movie somewhere this kind of swirling motion of galaxies rising up to the ceiling. But for some reason I just, I first saw it as a beam of light. Well, I'm still not sure how much I like it. And maybe it'll be important for it to dry a little. So I kind of, I had to walk away from the whole beaming light out of the treasure chest and decided to take my focus away and grab the micron pens and do a little illustration to try and firm up some of the details. I thought maybe as the details came together, maybe my brain could wrap itself around that treasure chest. I also noticed too that um, since I'm playing with the design and slowly building upon it, that my first coating of paint on there on was a wash. So here's what's going on today. Everything is dry, but um, first of all, things look very monochromatic and flat to me. So I'm feeling like I got to work. I want to make this a different color. Look at this over here on Pinterest. Look at that door. Oh. Maybe I should go with a nice, <clears throat> more deeper, rich, brown, burgundy kind of color here to help it stand out. Plus, it's such a magnified view. We, we would see more texture on the door. Leave this flat maybe with some paint speckles on it. Mm. And this. I'm not satisfied with this yet. I think it's interesting that when I did a search for a rays of light out of box, that one of the first things that came up was a treasure chest with light coming out of it. Of course, mine is a side view, right? It's concentrated. It's con with my finger. It's concentrated at the center. And then it's as if you can see through the light beams at the end. Which, I have a little bit of that kind of going on there. So, I think what I'm looking for is more of a glow. And I think I definitely need to make sure it goes to the edge. Because 
it needs to reflect up to the ceiling or light up the ceiling. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, that alludes to what's going to happen on the next page when I develop my story, if we're going to call this a story. I use the soft brush there to kind of fan out the white and not make it so, I don't know, linear. I can tell my brain is just still struggling with what is this that I'm trying to capture. And I think after I worked on this, uh, playing, uh, oh, what's the game I play? Hidden, hidden, hidden city, <laughs> hidden city. And there was a animation similar to what I was looking for here. And it looked nothing like this. It would have not been so bright white. You would have seen it would have been wispier and it had more spirals to it, not just beams of light shooting straight up. But as you see, as, as you'll see, as we get to near the end of this, I start adding swirls later. All right, let's get off the door again because, <laughs> I mean, no, let's go to the door because I need to get off that treasure chest. Yes, what do we think, right? These are water soluble. I feel like it We'll give the door a little bit more weight. So the next thing that I know is happening for me is I'm getting tired of the page, right? It seems like it should be such a simple page, but because I've been, I guess, kind of racking my brain how to develop it, when it comes to the door where I know I could probably do more uh, wood grain in my illustration at this point I didn't want to take the time to do it really and these um, oil pastels water soluble oil pastels do, like these. These are... do the, would do the trick for me color a la creme <laughs> prima I love the design on the top of that box, right? <laughs> but they did give this door a bit more texture and certainly more of a vivid color. So I think I started to say, you know, when I was beginning to develop it, I could tell like the the colors are still just a wash. It's almost like I'm too afraid to lay down any deep dark colors yet because I'm really not sure where or how I want it to look. And slowly, and you can tell by my sleeves that this is taking several days because my sleeves change <laughs> as we go along. So, patience. All right, let's see if we can't finish this page because, um, Tired of looking at it. I'm ready to move on. I like the way it looks right now in that picture there, but I do know <laughs> I develop it a little bit more. But I'm not dissatisfied at this stage of the game, looking back on this video. And when I'm editing my videos, I'm very much aware that not everybody wants to spend so much time watching these videos. And I try not to fast forward too much because I don't want to get us all nauseous. And I do try and maybe cut and, and jump to the end like I did with the when I was illustrating before with the pens. The 
think I may have wanted to go into a little bit more detail on the greenery around the door too because that is the closest thing to you in observation. However, it's not the focus of the page. So while I think I want to go into more detail, I think it's very appropriate because you don't want to pull away from the trunk, especially that glowing light grabbing your attention anyway. I was watching behind the scenes of the Mayfair Witches where you get to see set design. And the thoughts going in my head are I wonder when I watch things like that to see the talent. I remember interviewing once for set design out in Jersey City. It just wasn't right for me. But, again, I'm all about encouraging people to explore their talent. It's so easy to look at behind the scenes and, and all these professional, talented people and to want to limit yourself or talk yourself down about how bad you are in comparison. It's just human nature to com go through that comparison. I've done it. I still do it. The only difference is I try to be better than I was yesterday. Do it for yourself. Don't do it to try to be better than someone else. I can tell by how calm I'm speaking that at this point it's almost like a coloring book to me because it really is all laid out now. I just have to mm -hmm. determine how to color it. More definition here. It's just way too light. Like this here just really, you need to see that you're turning a corner here. So my formal art training, I did have four years of art while I was going through college. But like I said, there are so many other talented people out there and you may be one of them watching this and you may be frustrated with how I'm going about this, but it really isn't about that for me. I just... I, I'm in my own space, enjoying what I'm doing, and enjoying the process of how I'm getting there. And again, I just want to encourage other people to do the same thing for themselves. Okay, so I'm going to flip to it. Uh, I'm going to capture some video and add it in here because what I'm doing is I'm using my finger to take the saturated brush. I'm saturating that brush tip with browns and greens and then flicking it off my finger to create kind of a speckled texture, give it some motion, some character, and not just be a flat wash. I just want to take a scissor and uh, 
cut that string on my sleeve. <laughs> I had to be patient with myself. Too many times I was doing where I would do the, the, the doorway, the frame of the doorway, and then want to do the floor, but the paper was still wet and it would keep bleeding. So I really had to be patient with myself and wait and finally have a chance where it was dry and I could really make that hard edge for the interior and that makes a huge difference. green paint under my nail. All right, got some metallic watercolors. So we're going to dive in again here for this treasure chest. This is it. Because I want to get this page done and move on. I haven't used these in a while, so it's going to take some time to saturate the paint. Oh, I forgot. Nope. I wanted to give the frame of the treasure chest a metallic look. The metal bands that are holding the wood chest together. And what I love about those micron pens, taking one out and looking at it now, yes, the Pigma micron archival ink pens is I had put, you can barely see them here, but I had put little dots along the side of the treasure chest as if there were nails holding that metal strip in. And what I love about those pens is that I'm able to wash over them with this watercolor and it doesn't smear those little dots. It doesn't, they don't bleed. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that middle strap, but I, I think the only alternative between that and the handle was to do black, and I didn't want to do any more black. So I decided to hit that middle strap with more copper, and then just leave the handle on the treasure chest white, or unpainted, shall we say. <laughs> was I saying, I was probably saying something there, but with the time constraints, I opted to keep it a fast forward. Just adding a little bit more detail there, a little bit more contrast to help that handle stand out. I kind of think even on the door too, the handles and the straps might have been a black, but I didn't want to go that route, so I kept them unpainted. All right, this is what's going on in my brain. I already have different gradations of light and dark, that if I just do a wash over the whole thing, it's already going to determine where it will be light and dark. hair on my sleeve. When you have pets, they go with you everywhere. There's that thread again on my sleeve, though. You just get a scissor and cut that off. <laughs> I 
I love that you can see the texture of the paper underneath it. And right here in the center. Mm, it does pick up, look, some of the purple is coming out. I think it turned out good that I did gesso it because it never bled yeah, through the paper. Those are these magicals from Lindy's stamp. I wonder if I could get away with. I don't know. I don't want to dip my wet into the powder. Is that going to ruin the rest of the powder? Mmm. I feel like I want to do a... So in the end, I do like the way that this finally does come out however even now watching it i'm thinking if i had painted it more in a spiral like a spring a, you know expanding spring i think that may actually capture what's going on in my mind better However, for this being a page in this journal depicting an idea, it's perfectly fine. And, you know, at the end of the day, I just really can't drive myself crazy over it. I really want to just have fun. And also, at the end of the day, I have another completed journal page rather than an empty book. where I'm holding on to the ideas in my head. I did give it life. This particular brush really did handle the water well, and the spirals were really coming easy, so I started to get really carried away and was enjoying the process here. Yeah, look at that. That looks great. Still not what's going on in my brain, but I really do like the way that looks. I almost feel like a genie or something might be coming out of the treasure chest. <laughs> well, I guess that gives away that that's not what happens. <laughs> Mm, yes, a genie coming out and granting you wishes. Essentially, in my story, in my mind, though, you don't need the genie. That when you open up the treasure chest and you're seeing these galaxies spiraling up towards the ceiling, to me, that's limitless possibility. Like, your life can be, the universe, endless. So many choices, so many options. See, you can't say the sky is the limit, because it's the universe. Limitless. Potential. Possibility. Okay, I'm getting carried away. <laughs> I like it. Put a fork in it. It's done. Hey, thanks for watching and listening to the process that goes on up in here. 
Uh, I can only hope that it helps you express your creativity, inspires you to take some action towards something maybe you've been putting off for a while. I appreciate your time. Thank you, and we'll see you again soon.